topic there raises three questions. Uh, first of all, what do we mean by relevant economic education? Uh, two is economic education in sub-Saharan Africa relevant? Uh, if not, uh, how can we uh, make it relevant? So those are the three quick, three quick key questions uh, which uh, will guide the uh, lecture which I'm going to uh, deliver. Now, relevant economic education can mean one of two things. Uh, it can mean economic education which addresses the job market requirements so that when students graduate from SA is they find jobs in the government, in the public sector institutions other than government or in the private sector. Uh, that's, that's one meaning. Uh, and uh, it's the meaning uh, which no, that's, that's the meaning to which governments uh, attach importance. Uh, will students find employment when they're being invested with an economics degree? Uh, that, however, is not my concern. I'm only concerned with uh, relevant economic education uh, which is in tune with the characteristics of the economy of Sub-Saharan Africa. This is, I'm more interested in that aspect, in some uh, I'm not saying that the employment aspect is, is not important. That's it, it's certainly crucial. Uh, but uh, in a lecture of this nature, you cannot combine two things. You have to focus, you have to address one. Uh, economics is the study of economic life, where by economic life we uh, mean the activities that you people do to make a living. Uh, all of you, in one way or another, are involved in economic life. In one way or another, you're involved in making a living, either by working or by producing, selling, or even in business. Uh, or supplying uh, your resources, maybe you have land, maybe you have a building which you are renting out. Uh, etc. That's uh, what you do to uh, make a living. So that's what economics is all about. In Africa at the moment, and not just sub Saharan Africa, we have about 1,498 universities. Uh, that's an estimate. It, it depends on the number, depends on how you or what you consider to be invested. Uh, we have in Malawi uh, an economic system which uh, was uh, imposed on, on us during the colonial era, capitalists. Uh, there's a capitalist economic system in the country, yeah? uh, but there's also an indigenous, a traditional economic system, which is a communalist. Uh, an economic system, because uh, uh, I'm going too fast, I'm not explaining, is simply uh, the set of arrangements. Uh, by which an economy is organized and by which the economy uses its resources, money, okay, whatever. So if the, uh, the, yes, the, if the resources, if the means of production are owned by individuals and the, the, those individuals simply for market signals to use their resources to maximize their own benefits, capitalism, capitalism, the system of capitalism. In the communalism, the resources are on the community, uh, and the, the guiding principle is not the market, it's not the price there, but it's the uh, collaboration, the cooperation among the, uh, the producers, the consumers, and the uh, resource owners. So uh, this system, co co communalist system, uh, these people don't understand. Yeah. I've, 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 I've never come across anything written by Europeans which he explains 
the system as accurately as the blue people will explain. I've not uh, come across any my my myself. Maybe you, you, you have. They don't understand. Uh, but uh, what I meant to understand their economic history. So they don't understand how. And because they don't understand our economic system and because they don't appreciate our culture. Uh, when they try to use their economics, when they apply when they apply that economics to us, to sub-Saharan African economists, uh, by saying they, I'm, I'm referring now, not just to the author, people that write the, that type of economics, but also the researchers, the people who use it to do carry out research, the policy makers in governments, uh, regional and international development agencies, uh, when they try to apply that type of species of economics to us, it, it, it leads to numerous distortions, falsifications uh, of knowledge, of, uh, of concepts, facts uh, about economies of sub Saharan Africa. I will uh, give you some examples shortly. But it, its application also has resulted in harmful and damaging effects. Uh, uh, which uh, I will explain at a greater length than the distortions and the falsifications. So, examples of those falsifications are uh, the concept of corporate and cooperative societies. Now, when Europeans talk about what they say, what they say to cooperate, <coughs> The economic sphere. They, they mean people, the fact that people uh, actually uh, jointly setting up a business uh, where those people are also the customers. That's what Europeans mean by cooperating. So the business setup is called now a cooperative society. We have a plural there, corporate society, so the business so formed is corporate society. It's a joint enterprise. Now, that's not the meaning of corporate, corporate society to, to us. It is a serious pro problem. Uh, when we talk of co cooperating, we refer, we refer to uh, an arrangement whereby separate enterprises or separate uh, uh, resource owners or consumers uh, help one other and another, yes, by uh, exchanging the use of resources. Say in, in the farming, the, what they do is uh, work in one person's garden today, and the next, one, the next day another person's garden. That, that's, that's what cooperation means. Because, uh, African governments uh, have wrongly assumed that the cooperation in the indigenous context means actually refers to a European institution or setting up a joint enterprise. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's uh, different. Uh, so we have the situation after independence that governments actually set the, well, continued with the cooperative societies the Europeans have set up and they, they forgot to establish cooperative <coughs> associations in uh, our uh, context. So that part of social capital is not being promoted in Africa by African government. Uh, another dis distortion falsification is the statement that indigenous economic system is primitive or traditional uh, by those authors and the institutions. Uh, uh, the meaning of that is not quite uh, clear because the that encyclopedia. Uh, what it says is primitive is actually uh, an economy in which technology is primitive. 
Now, the type of technology used in economic, in the economy is not a defining criteria for economic system, so that's, that's wrong. Uh, the term traditional has been used by those authors, uh, living some old who have lived, who lived in Africa. And if you say, please don't make and the one missing who, 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 who didn't live in Africa. Now, Lip said Crystal make the, uh, the fantastic uh, the statement that the, these economies are traditional because daughters uh, simply copy what their mothers do. Uh, no, but the, again, that's not a defining criteria for you know, the economic system. That the boys do what they are, follow what their fathers are doing. And that's not the economic system. Uh, uh, it shows that somebody is not serious about uh, us. He <laughs> uh, doesn't care about uh, us. It's, 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 it's more than uh, lack of understanding of other people's economic system. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's sheer and malice. Uh, because this system, as I've said, is uh, communalist. You see, communal ownership of the means of production and people cooperating, uh, working to, to produce or working to do, or consuming together or mobilizing resources as in Chicago, like Chicago, Ghana. To, yeah, that's, uh, that's the system. Next, economy, the indigenous economy is unorganized. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, that's an insight. Academic insight, yeah. <laughs> we have an economic academic insight. It's a deception. Uh, I think my next book will be about deception in economics. <laughs> <laughs> because we found so many of, of these deceptions. In digital economy is unorganized. What does it mean? It, it mean we don't have the uh, capacity to organize ourselves. We, we, we just Produce anyhow. The, the vendors there, you mean they're not organ organizing, they just go there and sell. That's wrong, that's wrong. Uh, yes, our indigenous economy is also organized. We, we, we are organized in communal enterprises. The examples of which I'm giving, we are organized in cooperative associations for production, for consumption, for resource mobilization, etc. Uh, some, of course, work as independent. Uh, but uh, even in Europe, too, there are people who, uh, who set up their own independent enterprises. Uh, but uh, they don't call those unorganized. But they call our, our unorganized. <laughs> That's it. Uh, lastly, uh, this is just the tip of an iceberg. Uh, we, we don't have the time in a lecture of this nature to go through uh, the many. But, but as I said, the, there are so many that I think it's possible for one to write a, a book on this deceptive economics, which I, I must think about very uh, serious. Uh, lastly, there is an, in, an, an urban informal sector. Yes. In, informal means what? That there are no established procedures. Uh, no, 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 no economy can run unless there are established procedures. In a, in a society, has to have the study prestige. Uh, the 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 bicycle taxis you see on the streets, the, or the motor bicycle taxis, or the motor vehicle taxis, they have procedures for uh, running their businesses. First come, first sell, or they share the market. Uh, even the vendors uh, who have found out uh, in indigenous economies that they share, share the, the market. They have invented terms like chichipani, meaning they share it with the market. So you, you come to uh, the market today, the next day you don't come, somebody else comes to sell with the way as it's said. Or Ten Yang, we found that Ten Yang is Chitonga for my time. So we were found those, those terms in indigenous economics. So, and uh, uh, because there, exi there exists these terms, there must be uh, there must be uh, uh, economics. People know, know economics. Yes, 
with the e e economists don't invent the economy. The economy is invented by the people themselves. Yeah. The producers, the consumers, etc. These are the people who invent the economy. We, we don't. I will only observe Japan, Kenya, uh, and they try to explain that uh, by creating our toy, economic toys. We call them models, but they, they are really toy toys. Yes, we, we also work with the toys. We try to uh, build a model with, uh, of how the economy uh, 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 functions. Uh, next, I come to the second set of problems uh, generated by conventional economics in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, number one is the creation of misfits for membership of African societies, management, and development. And development. Uh, that's an accusation. It says all of us are misfits. We can't fit into African society. Yes, we are totally wrong knowledge. We are we're, we're at home in Europe or with Europeans and Americans. Uh, our knowledge kit can't fit in. Uh, we cannot, we are not there to maintain African society. In fact, a lot of us are working to destroy African society. Yes. A lot of us are working to destroy African society. We condemn Caterpillar uh, because we wrongly assume that uh, they charge very high rates of interest. Uh, some do, but uh, the, 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 yes, some do charge 100% or, or more, more uh, what we call Marago Mar, Stone for Stone. <laughs> stone for Stone, 100%, very hard uh, term for, for a, a loan, 100%, but the others charge uh, 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 less, 50% or less. Uh, less. That's Bichenga Kumchenga, it's you know, sand for sand, it's getting soft. Uh, then even below that 25% or even less than that, that's the top of top. Even lower, it's just down, foam big foam, it's dust. It's dust. So, uh, the, the people involved have I mean, invented all these terms. Yeah, yeah. This is what we found out from the Caterpillar people themselves. We asked them. What hotel term do you associate with this rate of interest? They say, oh, this is one of one. So that's the uh, nature of the uh, indigenous economy. So people condemn Caterpillar. I, I think for the wrong reason. Wrong reason, don't understand. Now, people have also condemned village banks uh, or concept. This is condemnation. Uh, they look upon them as barbaric. They are not. They are standards. They are standards for like commercial banks, yeah. National Bank of Malawi, <laughs> FNB. These are, these are standards. Uh, uh, even though we, yeah, yeah. But for, for people who use that that's a standard. Yeah, for people who use the village bank, that's a standard. That's a norm. A concept. So we shouldn't think that what other people are using are not standards. They are not norms. Uh, to, to them, that's the, the best they can uh, do. Then the, the problem of brain migration. You all know brain drain. Uh, that's you getting out of the country using education abroad somewhere. That's brain drain. There's the uh, related concept in development economics called the brain migration. In the brain migration, the body remains here. <laughs> it's only the head now that flies out. <laughs> so you owe your allegiance to foreign ideas. Yes. Uh, not to local ideas. Uh, educated, therefore, why should you actually be talking about Maragoma? Why should you be talking about Chiperigan? This is sort of uneducated people. Uh, <laughs> Why should you be talking about Chiwira, Chigurela, Chigurela? Why you talk about Musuma? Dima. Why you talk about Dima? You mean educated. This is, this is for a primitive, not for you educated. Your brain is outside of this country, out of this <laughs> society. So you all are just for any idea. 
Uh, and, and that's why that also explains why uh, uh, certain, certain laws have actually been have had to be imported from abroad. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the, the whole the whole law there. It's not only in the British, the former British colonial empire, but also in the French and, and in the Portuguese. Yeah, they also go to Paris to copy French laws. Or to uh, Belgium to copy Belgium laws, or to Portugal to copy Portuguese laws. Yeah. Sometimes the copy is so comprehensive that they even copy the commas and the footsteps. <laughs> yes, because our legends is to foreign ideas, not to local ideas. We don't care about letting those uh, 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 ideas. Next, transmission of foreign knowledge from one generation to another, yes. Okay, I taught my students foreign ideas. So they in turn taught those ideas to other students. So their students too are teaching those ideas down to other generations. Uh, that's a point which Gerere was very much co co concerned, yes. Uh, if the, there's to be anything African left over, we have to uh, ch change. Lastly, on that page, external validation of local ideas, yes. Now, uh, as, I, uh, as I've said, very few local ideas are being used. Well, this is the point which you come up with. Yeah, yes, very. Uh, or very few of my ideas are appreciated, uh, valued, uh, unless somebody from outside tells you these ideas are good. Uh, yes, because for as an example, the, the village branch was concept. Uh, even though there are village bank in the traditional sense. Uh, uh, government NGOs did not start promoting village banks until a French girl in Niger uh, recommended that idea to NGOs. So the time they started promoting that local uh, concept in Niger, other people copied, we also copied in Malaya, that's how village banks came about if we, we, we must thank that French game. If she had not done that, there were going to be no British banks in Malawi, there would be no, no, no concept. Rest <laughs> assured. Sure. And so I'm thinking that if we, I, I want uh, garments, not only in Malawi, to, to use in, in, in indigenous ideas, I must find a white person who can tell them they're good. <laughs> now, despite the merits of communalism, which uh, you can read in that little book there, the Communalist Manifesto, uh, we didn't pursue the idea of establishing communalist economies. It was in the agenda of the Pan African movement at the beginning, from 19, the year 1900, it was. So the, the hope that uh, after telling independence, uh, African Ghanaians would follow a communalist path of development, but that was not going to be because uh, uh, the leading figures in the Pan-African movement in 1945 abandoned that project and embraced socialism. <coughs> Uh, not everybody embraced socialism. African, some African leaders said, no, we will stick to capitalism. I instituted during the colonial era. Uh, others, others said, we will not embrace communalism. Instead, we will uh, say it's a basis for something else. So that's how Sengo came up with the idea that uh, we should pursue negritude. Uh, derived from communalism, yes, Kaunda said we should be uh, pursue humanism, derived from uh, communalism. Uh, and then more recently, there's there have been attempts to uh, create what they call pseudo ideologies, 
that are not ideology. Like the black power, the black empowerment movement in South Africa. Uh, the NA indigenization uh, the movement. That's not, that's not an ideology. It's simply to uh, transfer ownership of the economy to indigenous peoples. That's, that's not an ideology. The ideology, the underlying ideology means capitalism in, in those states which are pursuing pseudo ideologies. The resources at our disposal are scarce. We don't have enough money to spend. But maybe some of you are happy now, or more than enough. We don't have enough land. We don't have enough, we don't have enough. Uh, later, later to produce all the things that we need, we need, we need. Uh, so we must choose, that's why choice country, we must choose what to, we can afford. Uh, we're going to go and buy the whole shop right, so we have to choose what to buy out of shop right. The money we have is, uh, is scarce. Now if you choose to buy Ankara, then of course you have less money for maybe buying a house, so there's an opportunity, there's a cost uh, in the whole we call it opportunity cost in Ankara. Uh, the, uh, that's what the, all, all of you do, that's what you, maybe I also, I also do, I also do. So the, 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 the economists have invented those three terms to explain uh, the problem you are facing of scarcity and the, the fact that you have to choose what you can buy and what you don't buy, and that if you buy one thing, you forego it without the other. So those terms uh, invented by economists simply describe what people do. You make up the, the economy. The, the economists, as I said at the beginning, don't uh, create the, the, the economy. Uh, in fact, the idea of a positive cost is uh, very old. Uh, it was even there during the time of Jesus. Uh, you remember how uh, Peter and James became his disciples. They had to forego their profession, fishing. <laughs> 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 and forget their family too. <laughs> there, there was a, a young man who, when Jesus called upon him, he said, what? Uh, give me, me time to be, say goodbye good to my family too. <laughs> then you go home first. So Jesus said, no. That's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must sacrifice. Unfortunately, of course, it's a sacrifice. Unfortunately, of course, it's a sacrifice. You buy a car, you know, now you sacrifice the house. You cannot have, have both. Boss. So the idea of sacrifice, was, that's, that's, so that young man didn't become a disciple. The other one, there was another one who said, when he just called upon him, he, 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 he said, no, give me time to go and bury my father. My father is dead. <laughs> go and bury my father. So Jesus said, even that is not enough. <laughs> we can't give you time to go and bury your father. Let him be dead, bury himself. <laughs> let, let others who are lost. <laughs> Better, 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 you, you must call me immediately. <laughs> so he did lost opportunity, he didn't, he didn't uh, Anyway, the die-hard conventional economists are also saying what last year, that some techniques of gender applicability, yeah, like linear programming. Uh, this is a te technique for maximizing uh, for production, with the, given that you have limited resources. You can, what can you produce? We call it linear programming. Cost benefit analysis, and for all of us must know that. We are comparing the be benefit of uh, what we are getting and what we are incurring as a cost. Uh, input output analysis is uh, about uh, analyzing the input output configuration of uh, enterprises, industries, or, or, or economy. Because to, to produce something, you must by inputs, uh, what comes out of those inputs is the output, the relationship between the two. That's what is called input output analysis. So th those techniques, uh, which are me mechanical, yes, easily can have general applicability. But uh, uh, 
uh, ideas which have to do with the culture of the people, the, 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 the organization of the people the, and the daily product of the, the, the people. Uh, those, uh, I don't think, have general applicability. Uh, lastly, we come to the stand of economic anthropologists. Uh, I hope we all know what anthropology is. The study of band. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm not being gender sensitive. Anthropology is the study of the humankind. It's, uh, it's the, the development, it's, it's, uh, it's customs, uh, it's traditions, uh, etc. That's what anthropology uh, is. So the economic part of that, the uh, studies the economic life of the people from the perspective of society, the perspective of the culture. So, this is why, uh, and those anthrop economic anthropologists who are for using the formal, the, the conventional economics, they are the, the, called the formalists. Yeah. Now, those against the use of conventional economics and in economic anthropology, they are called substantivists. Uh, the leading figures uh, there are uh, somebody called Polanyi. Uh, a historian and anthropologist, and uh, George Dutton from America, economist and anthropologist. The arguments are one that labor, credit, and goods market institutions are very different. Uh, yes, we, we have some distinct labor market institutions. I've talked about Musuma area in the, in the lecture. Musuma is a beggar working to help food. Uh, but there are, also, there are also communal labor markets, uh, like the Dima I talked about, which, uh, which indicated the, I think the Kalimarima in Pass, so the, the, this area here. The Kalimarima also refers, refers to a communal type of labor. So communal labor markets, yes, these are specific to this type of economy. They don't, they don't, they don't. Okay, we have reviewed how many schools of thought? The Pan African School. The two schools in economic anthropology, substantivist and the formalist. Two schools of thought in conventional economics. Uh, uh, out of those schools, uh, a total of five, five. I, I think it's, it's, is it three or so? The, uh, they are convinced that the uh, conventional economics is not relevant. It's distorting, it's creating harmful effects. Uh, only two schools of thought, the formalist in economic anthropology and a group, some group in the development of the school that thinks that conventional economics is still really relevant. So the, uh, the verdict is uh, in favor of those that something is wrong with it. So, to be teaching uh, something uh, different. Uh, this anthropologist at Cambridge has called it indigenous economics. So that's why some of us got the term indigenous economics. Uh, we were indigenous economics is in its infancy. Uh, and Pan Africanists also have recognized that. That's why they appealed for the development of the subject backed by basic research. I quote the term boy of Kenya there because he was very, uh, was very uh, outspoken, yeah, very outspoken, yeah. And was very us about the need for a new philosophy uh, to explain the African economy just right and to, to cement it. Uh, the, the, that appeal of his appeared in an article in uh, publishing in Transition, a magazine in Kenya, <laughs> but also in his book, Freedom and After. Now, if we talk economic anthropology, this, this would help, help, of course, so it was achieving the same thing. If, uh, uh, making the teaching of economics more 
more, more relevant because economic anthropology, like indigenous economics, draws on with the local culture. So, but we need to train teachers like us in the subject, of course. Yes, we must be introduced in schools, colleges. Uh, if we have to train our teachers abroad, they we must make sure that when they go out, they to learn subjects which are related to uh, in digital economics and therefore talk to uh, local cultures. Now, for schools, uh, let local examining bodies, include indigenous knowledge in economics. Syllabus so says, I, I know that in many professions, the nation says, I can economic And uh, so, uh, there's need, I think, to uh, indigenous uh, those services. Whereas children's schools take international dimensions long well before indigenization. I, I don't know whether the University of Cambridge will, will accept that. But those who are at academies and studying economics uh, can have the syllabuses modified to so to the local complex. Uh, if you invest as a branches of foreign institutions, uh, again, I think they can lobby for indigenization of those uh, syllabuses. Uh, as I say, don't throw out the baby with the water in the basin. <laughs> so there's something we can retain from conventional economics. Uh, but uh, I would recommend retaining those things which are culturally neutral, like the linear program I've talked about, the cost benefit analysis, the input uh, We implore, uh, this is crucial, sub Saharan African countries to follow the example of South Africa and others that have made it official policy to promote indigenous knowledge. So, investors in South Africa are very, are very active in promoting indigenous knowledge, uh, not only in economics. Uh, this lecture was about economics, uh, just to illustrate a problem which is uh, more general. Uh, there's a problem of relevance in almost every subject. There's a problem of relevance in law, a problem of relevance in psychology. Uh, that's why Dr. Chosa but now is, is a bit busy writing on psychology. There's a problem in the religion. Uh, that's why there's African religions and philosophy. So there's a problem in religion also in philosophy. There's a problem in sociology, political science. Uh, there's a problem in the hard sciences too. Uh, in the humanities too. A, yeah. yeah, because most of the history in Africa was written by Europeans. So this is the history of Europeans in Africa. It's not African history. <laughs> <laughs> African history is largely history of Europeans in Africa. Uh, like David Livingstone discovering the Victoria Falls. So when you go to the Victoria Falls, which side you, you see the statue there. I think this is the public side. You, you see the statue there. You see this is a man who discovered Victoria Falls. So that's African history. <laughs> it's very really little about both Africans. Have discovered. <laughs> well, what they discovered for other people can rediscover. <laughs> now, if you have to benchmark economics syllabus from other universities that adapt, adapted them to fit into the indigenous context, yes, there are universities in Africa that are doing, doing that. Yes, I don't benchmarking uh, American universities. Uh, even in Malawi, I know universities which are benchmarking uh, foreign institutions. So try to, to fit it to the indigenous context. Now, if you are contemplating establishing a high education institution, and I'm sure that well, maybe some of you are thinking of <coughs> establishing a uh, university, they set up one with the home growth. Uh, as did that pioneering lady, Fatima al uh, 29 AD, Middle Ages. No investor was established during the Dark Ages. The world of the variants and civilized, but in the Middle Ages. 
So thanks for your attention. God bless you, Malaya and the rest of South Southern Africa. And please sing that song. Muye, that is an Africa. Thank you.